if you're here, you're a teacher, you are the best person on this planet. You are wonderful people because you're the people who create all the other jobs in the world. I mean, that's pretty important for a start, isn't it? So, so, so well done. Well done for, for, for creating so many other years around the world. What we're going to do today, we're going to have a look at lots of different, okay? Um, we are going to have a look at the essential ingredients. And hopefully that's, that's what you're, you're waiting to hear. But me too, I'm waiting to hear your essential ingredients. And what I'd like you to do, and this is going to be your, your fidget spinner activity. Um, let me see. Sorry, I'm just going to share my screen one more time. And I would like you to open the chat if you haven't already opened it. Let's do that one again. Sorry, technical issues. And I'm glad it happened. This actually happened on purpose. I'll explain it now in a minute. In the chat, I'd like you to write down your three essential ingredients to teaching effective online lessons that you predict your, you will hear in the next 35 minutes or so. Have a look in the chat. So as you can see, uh, if you're not sure at the bottom, open the chat, then write your predictions here, and then send them here. Good Wi-Fi, yes. <laughs> That's, you see, I was demonstrating by example, exactly. But more than Wi-Fi, and I'll mention this in a minute, cable connection. Wi-Fi is your backup. Wi-Fi is your plan B. But yes, generate community. Wonderful. Exactly. Keep it simple. I agree. Wonderful. Understand how technology works. Absolutely. So three, good internet connection, laptop, individualized materials. And we saw personalization increases engagement. We heard that today as well. So yeah, lots of visuals. Don't let the tech take over. Lovely. Yes. Good. Gesture. Nice. Okay. So what I've just asked you to do there is I've asked you to predict what you're going to see and hear today. And therefore, now you have a reason to be here for the next 35 minutes because you need to check your answers. <laughs> so um, we're going to play a game of bingo with your three. If you hear all three mentioned, in the next 30 odd minutes, just type in the chat, bingo. That doesn't mean you can leave. It means, well, you can, but it means you've found the answers that you were expecting, which is wonderful. So let's move on. Now, we all want our students to, to be like this online. This is our ideal student and one of many, hopefully. Yes, she's engaged. She's having fun. She's enjoying learning. She's happy because she's learning. What we don't want is this. Now, I think COVID <laughs> meant that emergency online learning meant there were many people doing this. Um, I have a perfect example at home. My 15 year old son did it once and I caught him doing it. So I know it happens. So we need to, we need to change, don't we? We need to try to, in, how, how, you know, what are the ingredients in order to achieve this reaction? And it doesn't have to be all the time. We don't want students constantly, you know, laughing and smiling. That would just give them a pain in their cheeks. So there are many ingredients. Let's go back from the obvious ones, the setup. Okay, I'm, I'm going to start from the, the, you know, 
the complete beginning. Some of you don't have your cameras on. If you don't, that's fine. I'd much rather see your beautiful faces. Feel free to turn on your cameras because that's the engagement. And we'll talk about that acceptable user policy a bit later. If you're, for whatever reason, you can't turn on your cameras, that's fine as well. There's a reason for it. However, what it, wherever you are, just turn around now. And if you, if you haven't got a virtual background, what can people see behind you when you have your camera on? Is there anything that you probably wouldn't like them to see? Is there any personal information? Yes, Mihaela, you're having a quick look now. Good. Is, is there any information that you think, mm, you know, people could find information about me that I'm possibly not happy to share with everybody? So check your background. What's behind the camera doesn't really matter because nobody can see. The other thing, apart from your, your own personal privacy, is also your physical well-being. <laughs> exactly, Lynn, Elizabeth, in your dressing gown. Good idea to turn off your camera, um, but no problem if you are in your dressing gown. That just shows the, you know, the value of, of learning online. You can be practically anywhere, can't you? Wonderful. And much more comfortable as well, which is related to my, my next point about well-being. Now, we think that, you know, being online, you have to be sat down. I would say the majority of you are all sitting down at the moment. Why? I don't know. Why are you not on one of those big yoga balls and, you know, getting some exercise at the same time, multitasking? Many of you are probably on laptops. The definition of a laptop is a portable computer. It moves. You can be walking around your house with your tablet listening to this. You could be sitting on a bus. I've done it. I, my next plan is to give a talk from the countryside with good Wi-Fi access, but it's possible. So what I'm saying is you're online. You can be anywhere you want to be. You don't have to be sat on a hard chair in your house. But the same advice that I'm going to give you now, you should also give to your students about the background. So the first thing I do as soon as my students come into class is look at their background if I haven't been able to tell them before and say, listen, you might want to change that family photograph because, you know, people can find out about your family. Well done for standing up and switching to your stand up desk. Good. So I, many years ago, it's probably about two, three, three years ago now, I analyzed different classroom setups. I asked people to share photographs of their, their setups um, online and I took conclusions from, from all these lots of very, very useful setups. Here are some of the conclusions I drew. Swivel chair, something you can move around. Wheels maybe as well. Make sure your lower upper back is supported and head as well, your head support. Armrests are very useful. It reduces fatigue when you're sitting down. Think about your natural and indirect lighting. OK, you should never have light behind you because you just become a silhouette. Ideally, there would be maybe a, a natural light source behind the camera casting light upon you. I don't have that simply because of the way my room is set up. I wouldn't be able to access the window if I did that. So what do I have? Well, I have two lights either side of me, 45 degree angle to the camera. And they're just two lamps, and that's fine. Not directly shining in my, in my eyes. That's important. Okay, so there's indirect lighting bouncing off sort of the wall, essentially. I do have a light above me, which is shining on my hair, as you can see, and making my hair look grey. I mean, naturally, my, my hair is black, but it's the light that does it. So, yeah, sorry about that. Um, and those of you who are laughing, what are you laughing about? Anyway, so... Lighting, <laughs> um, organized, uncluttered space. So you have your books, your notepad, your, your timer, your whatever you need handy. You should have that option, as some of you have already said in the chat, that, to be able to stand and sit easily. 
Now, there are very expensive options for that or cheaper options for that. I'll, ex I'll give you an example later. The foot rest is useful. That will help, especially when you're standing up or sitting down with that lower back as well. Okay. Think about all the possible things that go wrong when you're teaching online. So a desktop computer is ideal. And then your laptop or tablet, which has been recharged, is your backup. That's your backup plan. If you're only using a laptop because that's all you have and that's fine, well, make sure it's plugged in all the time when you're teaching. Why? Well, power cuts sometimes happen. And therefore, when they do, voila, you can just use the, the energy um, on your laptop. But also think of other backups. So, for example, at the moment, I have lots of possible backups because lots of possible things have happened happened to me over the years. I have two desktop computers, both connected to LAN cable, so LAN cable, so to get internet connection via cable. I don't depend on my Wi-Fi. That's why my Wi-Fi is my backup. I have a laptop plugged in next to me. I have my telephone. I do have a tablet, but it's tucked away, so I haven't got that ready just yet. My telephone has internet connection as well. So if my internet connection goes on my desktop, I can hotspot on my laptop and still maintain connection. Very often I would be actually connected twice in the same meeting, one on the laptop, one on the desktop, just in case. So it's a quick change. So I'm saving time. Now, I understand not everybody can have lots of possible options. Worst case scenario, I think most of us probably have a phone with internet connection, well, there you go. You can connect via that. That would be your backup. So I think the thing is, whatever your situation is, try to anticipate possible things that could go wrong and find solutions before they happen. This will reduce your level of anxiety when teaching online. And your level of anxiety transmits to your students. And you don't want that anxiety to transmit to your students. You always want to appear calm, collected and in control, even though inside you're probably screaming. OK. <laughs> so um, different pieces of advice. I can, I, I, I can, you know, headsets, microphone, which is the best option, whichever suits you. I've used all different formats. I've used the air traffic controller option with your headphones and the microphone, which gives very, very good voice, which actually makes you feel closer to the student because your voice very becomes very close. Um, what I'm using at the moment is um, what we call a, a lapel or lavelia mic. So this was nine euros. Bought it online. Nine euros. I clip it here. It connects directly to my desktop, and it means that I can't walk away too far. Um, and that, but that's fine as well. And the sound, hopefully, is not too bad. You can hear me okay. The the earphones or the the microphone, you decide. Be careful. For example, I'm using a Bluetooth speaker here. However, if you all started speaking and this speaker was too close to my microphone you would get feedback, you would hear yourself. Whereas if I just keep it at a distance, this is an omnidirectional mic, so you're only gonna pick me up, you won't pick up that, okay? So experiment with what suits you best. Think about your decoration as well. Obviously, um, keeping it simple in the background, and that's one of the reasons I went with, well, I'm gonna use my, my materials as my background. So then you're focusing on that more than me. I'm not very important here. But use your background as a tool as I am. Why not? It's another resource of the platform. And we're going to have a look at that in a minute. So here's an example. I told you how, you know, I'm not going to spend all this money. Well, most of us probably have an ironing board at home. And if not, you could probably buy one. And it's going to be a lot cheaper than one of those tables that moves up and down automatically. As you can see, this particular teacher has everything organized, everything to hand. The laptop is, as you can see carefully, is, is it's plugged in. So it, just in case there's a power cut, well, we can use the, uh, the juice on the, uh, on the computer. 
brilliant. Um, it has the possibility of raising the screen to eye level. How will a few books underneath or a box or a cushion even? Um, the, the lighting is excellent. Look at the window behind the camera. A teacher will, will come, come across very, very clear on screen. Um, and I think the best thing about this setup is a quick option. So stand up, sit down in the middle of the lesson. If you're tired, well, sit down. Wouldn't you do this in a face to face environment? Well, yes. Well, then do the same in an online environment. OK, so this is all kind of related. To, your setup is, is related to your well-being as a teacher and the student's well-being. So all this advice that I'm giving you, you should also be giving to your students. So your posture, thank you, Matt, for correcting your posture while you're online. Brilliant. So, <laughs> um, so think about that. What if you're teaching at night for lights? Well, that's where the good question, Chris, that's where the, the, the lamps on the side come in, I think. Um, and yes, artificial lights, but not directly shining at you, please. Um, definitely indirect lighting, maybe with a lampshade or something, that would be fine. Yeah. And um, sometimes these little ring lights, I've got one in front of me now. Um, they're, they're quite economically accessible as well. And they don't you, you can sort of regulate the intensity and they can be useful. Think about the baggage that you're coming to class with, but also your students. Now, no matter what happens in our lives, we're all professional teachers. We kind of try to leave that at the door as we walk into our classroom. Now, our students are not really always good at doing the same and that's fine they're human just like we are so what do we need to do well we need to keep that in mind think about what i did how did i introduce this session i didn't ask you how are you today but i could have and i could have said well today we're going to look at you know the environmental or, or sort of vocabulary maybe or vocabulary related to the countryside so tell us how are you feeling tell me the word that represents how you're feeling what am i doing now i'm i'm, I'm asking you to pronounce words that later on we're probably going to see in the lesson but i'm also measuring your baggage your psychological baggage that you're coming how are you feeling are you feeling a bit flower as in you've had this crazy day and you oh, i need to sort of slow down drink less coffee maybe are you feeling a bit plant a bit sad today because you know you've got an exam result and you're not feeling great are you feeling tree oh yes feeling good because it's friday okay although it's a wednesday but still how are you feeling or you could it could be a completely distracting introduction which is what i did at the beginning of this session distracting in what way this is a, an example of me using a filter from a Snapchat filter via Zoom, which unfortunately you can no longer use because Snapchat stopped this option. Um, but it was me, short video, introducing what we're going to do today in our lesson. And it was our uh, basically one way for students to forget everything that as much as possible that happened up to that point in that day, because I knew all of them had an exam at school. They were sort of teenagers, 16 year olds, and it was right, right, okay. Let's forget about that and let's focus on what we're going to do. So a distracting introduction, get them focused. Remember, if they're not focused, if they're not ready to learn, it doesn't matter what you do in your lesson. Get them ready to learn and then they can, then they can learn. If you see that somebody needs, you know, water, if they look uncomfortable, if they, they're, you know, if it's late and they're tired, start, tell them to stand up, stretch, move around. Um, if they're hungry, go to the fridge. You're at home. Go get something to eat. Don't sit here, you know, hungry. Again, this is Stephen Krashen mentioned um, effective filters. And effective filters are like a, let's imagine, let's compare it to maybe the window of a car. The higher up that window, the less will enter. So the less the student's probably going to learn and certainly less they're going to acquire. Whereas I think that sounded like somebody drinking water, very useful. Now, if they're less, if you're, you're warm, if you're just warm, but not too hot, 
If you're cool but not cold, brilliant. But if you're cold, go get a blanket. If you're hot, go get a fan. I don't care what else you do. Go get a fan and then we'll carry on the lesson. If you're hungry and thirsty, go sort that out and then we'll start the lesson. If not, what's the point? Okay. Yes, flex of drinking and eating. Ras, it's true, yes. Although not when you're asking students to speak, otherwise they just kind of spray the camera. Uh, not, not pretty. Okay, let's, so, so we, we, we started with the setup. Wonderful. Let's think about the platforms we're going to use. Well, there are many. We're on one at the moment, probably the most popular one, partly because of um, uh, the, the, what happened in, in COVID. Everyone kind of turned to a few. And for educational purposes, we've discovered that Zoom is probably the sort of the most user friendly. However, there are many. And you can see some of them here. OK, some of them are very similar to Zoom. So butter.us, very similar to Zoom. And then the others offer different options as well. But there are many. And these are probably not the most common ones. Zoom is the one of the most common, but there are lots of others that I haven't included. If there are others that you use, please put them in the chat now for everybody. Remember that there are there's an ellipsis, three dots at the bottom of the chat. If you click on that, you should be able to save the chat, which might be useful at the end of this session, especially if people are putting in their suggestions, which I hope you will be doing. So if anybody uh, uses any other platforms, add them to the chat now. Yes, Tencent. Yes, good point. Well done. Google Meet. Exactly. Uh, the, at first, Google Meet wasn't great, but it's upped its game. Very useful as well. Good. Thank you for sharing. So once we've chosen the 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 platform, thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Miriam. Yes, wonderful. Once we've chosen the platform, then what's the important thing to do is get to know your classroom. That platform is now your classroom. And it has lots of possible options in order to help engage your students. For example, let's let's compare this to a face to face classroom. Let's imagine this is my physical classroom. Let's compare what some sometimes some things I've seen on Zoom happen and let's compare it to a face to face option. Let's imagine somebody, you know, a student is trying to enter the classroom and the, the teacher says, oh, yeah, I've, there, there's somebody at the door, but I, 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 I don't know how to let them in. How do I let me in? You don't know how to let a student into your own classroom? Mm, that's, an, that's an issue. So Alba is just going to join us now, so I'll let her in. So, OK, we need to know that. The, um, oh, OK, right. Well, I'm I, I want to share my screen and show you something. So, uh, oh, um, um, how how do I how do I show you my I I can't I, I don't know how to sh share my screen, sorry. But I I know what I'll do is I'll I'll show you an image on the TV on on oh um on on the t how how does TV work? Because we were going to do a listening and I I I don't know how the I don't know how to share the audio. If that's you in your classroom, it doesn't look good, does it? That's why you need to know your classroom, which is your online platform, your online environment. But even more so, there are many, many things that can facilitate learning much more. So some of you are invited to go to breakout rooms. Wonderful. Now you're, it's much more student centered, isn't it? They're working together. It's less stress on you as well and your voice, which is remember your most valuable commodity as a teacher. You need to reduce that. So get to know your classroom. The more you know it, I think the more engaged students will be because you'll be able to use the resources on that as well. So we've thought about our setup, we've chosen our platform, and now we're we're accepting students, lots of students wanting to, to you know, maybe pay lots of money to us to, to teach them. Wonderful. But then we have to decide, well, how are you going to enter my classroom? We, we need to come, you know, maybe there's a contract involved. Maybe there's an acceptable user policy 
this is how I want you to behave in my classroom or how I expect to behave in your classroom. This website is an example. It's, um, it's actually a, a website for which offers free English classes for students of English. Okay. But on the website, you can see the, the student code of conduct. So it's free. Okay, it's free, but still there's an expectation of how you will behave. So you can see here, there's a list of things. Well, you shouldn't be doing this or you should be keeping this in mind. And everyone's welcome. Please respect everyone is the basis of all the other comments here as well. But not only is it a user policy, there's also a kind of advice of how to make the most of the online lessons. And this is uh, a lesson agreement. Now, there's no obligation because, well, this may be may involve the economic abilities of our students. So, for example, we'll, I'll say, well, OK, listen, ideally you would have, you know, microphone and headphones like you can see in the picture. But maybe my student says, well, listen, teacher, I, I can't afford that. That's fine. That's OK. Well, I, it's a suggestion. It's a recommendation. It's not an obligation. But other things which many of you did, you know, joining just two minutes beforehand. And that's the beauty of online, isn't it? You could be in your kitchen making lunch, preparing lunch for a bit later, and literally two minutes before you have to join a meeting, boom, that's it. You come from the, the kitchen and click enter. Oh, how much time is that saving? That's wonderful. But also, you know, same advice as I gave you as a teacher, tell your students, find a comfortable place. Make sure you've got your basic requirements, you know, water, food, Make sure you're not too hot, not too cold. OK, so except for user policy is something that I would recommend everybody have. Because it's the go back to if there is an issue. Now, one big thing is the methodology. And this is something that personally, I think we are very, very behind on in online learning generally. What happened? Um, very recently with the lockdown was that there was what we call emergency remote teaching. So many people, what they did was the same as they've always done in a face-to-face -face classroom and tried to do it online. Nope, that doesn't work. And we discovered that that doesn't work. And, and people have continued, some people have continued to do that and still discovering that it's not the most effective way to make the most of everything we have both on the platform as well as online so we can see the the you know the the worst case scenario is the lecture and we know the you know the, the reaction of students when we just go through a lecture unfortunately you're kind of receiving a lecture at the moment aren't you and i do apologize but maybe demonstrating as well is what i'm doing I'm trying to instigate some kind of discussion via the chat, but I'm not asking you very many questions. So that's 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 something that I need to change. Practice is what we need to do the most. And I think you may or may not agree with me, but I've discovered that for me personally, the best way to learn something is to try to teach somebody else that thing. Why? Because to teach somebody else, I have to know it pretty well first myself. So if I need to teach somebody how to use Zoom, for example, right, I have to do my homework first. I have to discover the main elements or the most significant points of Zoom. So this, the teaching side of things, is something that we can encourage our students to do more and more. And this is related to methodology. So if we go kind of let, let's use ELT methodology terms. So um, there's, there's PPP. Can somebody write in the chat what, what does that normally stand for when you're teaching English as a second or a foreign language, PPP? It's a, a lesson framework. Presentation is the first word. The first P is presentation. The reason I'm asking you is my terrible memory. That it's present. Thank you, Yilin. Thank you. Yeah, I, that's yeah. Present exactly, Lei Jin. Thank you. Yes. So presentation, practice, and then produce. 
OK, so we could say that that's kind of more or less this. You're presenting something and that's maybe a lecture. Then you're practicing. Thank you. Yes. Um, and then finally, you're producing something so that, that, that you're getting your students practicing. Then we have something else, which is TBL. I've forgotten again. Can somebody help me? What, what does TBL stand for? What was that? Thank you. Well, Yulin is really on the ball, isn't she? Yeah, Leanne, thank you, Tatiana. Exactly. Task-based learning. Thank you. Um, so you, you're giving students a specific task to do. They go away in their group and they do this activity, maybe. Okay, wonderful. That's a very simplified way of explaining task-based learning. But you all have access to the internet, so you don't need me to give you a defini definition of task-based learning. You can use the relatively new verb. I say new because of my age. Um, Google, you can Google it. Okay. And then we have S O L E, which is at this kind of end. What's, what's that? Oh, <gasps> thank you. Classes ignite. Self organized learning environment. And there have been some schools who um, in a face-to-face -face environment have experimented with this. There's one particular one in London, very famous one in London, who tried this and dedicated a room to this. What they did was their own little take on it. And one example was that they, they gave, you, you give a group of students something to discover. For example, maybe how does the digestive system work? And it could be a very specific closed type of area or something more open and generic that you maybe have to debate and discuss about. So you can decide you measure that. And then you divide students into groups, maybe three, four, five people. And you say, OK, off you go. Come back and teach us. How does the digestive system work, please? You decide how you're going to present it. You decide who's going to say what. You organize yourselves. OK, you, you, there is there's also the flipped approach, which some of you I'm, or many of you, I'm sure, already know about. But you can see the way I would suggest that online learning should be going in this direction. And this point here is only the beginning. This is only the beginning. We, we've, there's lots more we need to explore and change about online learning. And we need to be brave. So methodology. OK, what about materials and resources? And there's lots. And we heard in, you know, from Michael and Andrew some very, very useful resources there. In the chat, could you write down some of your favorites? Are there any particular resources or particular materials that you use? Maybe it's a, it could be Google Docs, for example, to create your own materials. Remember, 80% of teachers make their own materials, we heard. The Oxford Dictionary, good idea. Padlet, yes, very useful. And, and can be accessed around the world, which is important. Quizlet. I'm so very happy you said that, Lizzie. I'll explain why in a moment. Yes. OK, Quizlet. Any, any others, guys? OK, dictionary, the yeah, Longman Dictionary. The Longman Contemporary Dictionary many years ago is something that I used to use lots as well. Google Classroom, a learning management system, isn't it? It's very, very useful. Unfortunately, not accessible to the China market and maybe a couple of other countries. Um, yes, Sandy Millen did on Flippity. You're right. I was looking at her talk very recently, actually. It was very, very useful, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, brilliant classroom presentations hall from National Geographic. And there we go. That's it. So that the publishers can produce lots of materials and they do. Yes, Google Images. So you can, you know, take students on a tour of your neighborhood, can't you? With Google Maps, for example. Kahoot. Oh, very glad you said that, Michaela. Yeah, good. Microsoft Forms. Good. And then Google Forms. Yeah, good. Word Wheel. Brilliant. Yes. 
Um, thank you for sharing Sandy's talk. Yeah, that's lots of resources there. Jamboard, again, a Google product, isn't it? Very useful for interactive materials. Carry on posting your ideas there, because remember what you're doing is you're sharing for everybody's benefit. Okay, so everybody's benefiting from everything you put in the chat. Remember, you can save the chat at the end of the talk as well. So thank you much for sharing. Um, Mentimeter for polls and stuff. Yeah, remember Zoom has polls as well, but yeah, excellent. Well done. Okay, so let's let's divide some of those down a little bit. So for example, okay, we know Zoom has an online whiteboard and they've just, they've recently updated that as well to make that better and you can create your own and save them. And But then there are other whiteboards here as well. There's some, some a few examples you might want to experiment with. There are, your own materials. Remember, you know, we heard earlier that the majority of, of us teachers do, you know, make our own materials. So we've got, for example, AppWiser. You can create these digital workshops, liveworksheets.com, same, very similar digital worksheets, which are your traditional worksheets, but in a more interactive format. Okay, they're useful, brilliant. You can all spot the spelling mistake. Sorry about this, guys. So um, answer questions in a game format in Oodlu. Book widgets are interactive exercises um, with both formative and summative e evaluation. And then you've got, as you can see, craft.do, which you can make your own documents in as well. There are many. OK, these are just a few. And thank you for sharing other uh, talks as well, because there are literally hundreds of possibilities. Um, exactly, the whiteboard on Zoom. Uh, it, I, I completely agree. Yes, uh, as I mentioned before. Cool. So what we want, though, is we, we don't want the teacher to be the sage on the stage. We want the teacher to be the guide on the side. So we need to kind of get out of the way a little bit, don't we? How can we do that? Well, with collaborative materials, students can create and produce their own and then present back to the whole group, maybe. We've seen some of you already using these, the Google Docs, the Forms, the Jamboard, all, all the Google Suite. But there's a restriction in some countries for this, so we need to be aware of that. Here you have some other alternatives. And this last one offers a whole team experience or group experience as well that you can create. So again, just examples of other possible solutions. And there are many. I know there are many. What I have not mentioned. Ah, OK, yeah, I've, I'll come back to your comment now, Chris. Um, I've not mentioned all of these. And this, this is the big elephant in the room. Everybody's talking about, we've all gone AI crazy at the moment, or maybe AI is driving us crazy. I don't know, we, we, whichever it is, I don't know, but we've, AI is, is the key word at the moment. And I haven't mentioned that. Why? Well, that's another talk. That's another world, isn't it? But this one I realize actually turns your text into a presentation immediately. I did not use this for this presentation, I promise but it does it. So if you do have any other AI suggestions, well, fine, put them in the chat, share them with us. They'll all be useful, I'm sure. I think that come up, come up in the previous talk. Chris in the chat is asking about um, students recording themselves. Yeah, I, I tend to use Vocaroo. I'll put that in the chat. Vocaroo.com. It's very, very sim simple, web-based. Go onto the website, make sure that you you give it permission to record, you know, wh wh whichever device you're using to record. You record it, save it, copy the link, and then send the link to the students. And I use this quite often. It saves me a lot of time. Google Docs. You could actually, in Google Docs, if you use it in Chrome, you can use the dictation option. And you could ask students to say what they want to say and see if the actual um, 
document itself recognizes their speech and turns that into text. I've tried it myself. It's not perfect, we know, but it might save you, even as a teacher, typing and hurting your wrists because of all that typing. Sometimes I use this format and then just modify mistakes maybe that's come in, but it means that I'm not typing so much and their wrists much. Okay, as a follow-up. Um, yes, there we go, Leanne. Yes, recording on mobile phones and sending the document. Maybe not a link if it's on your phone, but yes, it's a possibility. But there are many. Um, I'll, I mean, I, I, I can, can mention others as well, but that's probably my favorite, Vokaru, having, um, having used different ones as well. Some of the comments, some of the things that I've mentioned today, you could also find in these two courses. These are very short professional development online courses, which you can find at this website. OK, and they they go over in a little bit more detail, because obviously the time is of the essence here. A little bit more detail of the things that I've mentioned here today. OK, so let's go back to your fidget spinner. Do you remember I asked you to write down three things that you expect to hear today? So what were they? And has I haven't read anybody saying bingo yet. Nobody said bingo? Right. Okay, well, I I nearly said bingo. And here were my three. Look, I said, I'm going to hear Kahoot, Bamboozle, and Quizlet. What did I hear? Kahoot and Quizlet. I didn't hear Bamboozle. Nobody mentioned Bamboozle. Another website to practice. So I didn't get bingo either. But okay, that means we've learned something extra above and beyond our expectations and our predictions. Well, at least I hope you did. So let's just recap. Listen, the essential ingredients, there are many. I, I wouldn't be able to cover them all, but some of some of the essential ones, the setup and your personal, uh, your uh, physical and your mental well-being and that of your students. That comes first. The platform, your, oh, what was AUP? I, memory's gone again. Could somebody type it in the chat? Sorry, I'm getting old. What was A? A U P. No, O U P is old, old age, O A P is old age pensioner. So thank you, Mihaela. Acceptable user policy. Brilliant. So that agreement with your students. Think about the methodology you're going to be using. You might vary it, and that's good as well. Think about the materials. There, the publishers are really getting their act together now and creating um, adaptable uh, materials that can be used both face to face and online and in hybrid modes as well. So maybe talk to your local rep, okay? Now, all of, if the, if we have a look at, whoop, let me get out of the way. If we have a look at the, the essential ingredients, we can see that, you know, S-P-A-M is spam, which is something that we receive in our emails. We're not, um, not too kind of keen on having. So why don't we think about, using these ingredients in order to avoid having something we don't want, which is spam, and which is that student who just puts the mannequin in front of the camera. If we flip it round, it's MAPS. So the acronym is MAPS, which is mapping the route of where we want to go, mapping the student experience so that students feel that they are getting a, a very well-planned experience for their learning. Good point, Jane. Yes, you need to check for copyright and materials as well. I think hopefully I have included some of that in or as much as possible as I've been able to find in the images that I've used. And we do need to be aware of that. I completely agree. Thank you very much. OK, last but not least, I would just like to say. Then Q. Thank you very much for putting up with me. Um, if there are any questions, feel free to get in touch. 
but feel free to either turn on your microphone or type in the chat. <laughs>